The movie begin with a man named Solomon. He is a great violinist and famous enough to live a good life in Saratoga Springs, New York. He lived freely despite being a black American amid slavery. One day, Solomon's friend introduced him to two magicians. They offered him a gig in Washington for two weeks with a reasonable salary. He accepted the offer and immediately appeared for the performance. It was a success and to celebrate it, he was invited by the two magicians to a restaurant. On that occasion, Solomon drank quite a lot until he was drunk and unconscious. The next day, Solomon woke up and was shocked because his hands were tied and he was in a place like a prison. Shortly after, two people from before came to Solomon. Solomon said that he is a free man which also has a wife and children and lives in Saratoga Springs, New York but the two people did not believe him. They were convinced that Solomon was a slave and a fugitive from Georgia. He tried to convince them that he is a free man but instead of believing him, the two people beat Solomon's consciousness away. After that, someone else approached Solomon and ordered him to change his clothes with the clothes that the person brought then smuggled Solomon and some other people in the night with a carriage. Later he found out that he will be taken to a place where they traded slaves. He and the other slaves were then ordered to get on the ship. Someone reminded him that he had to hide his ability to read and write because if someone from the human trafficking mafia found out about it, Solomon will be murdered. If you want to survive, do and say as little as possible. On the ship, there was a white crew member who dragged a black girl and was about to rape her. A black man then blocked him and made him mad. He then stabbed the black man to death. Solomon and the others were shocked. They were ordered to throw the man's dead body into the sea. Upon arrival at the port, they were presented to someone. Solomon tried to explain his real name but he was instead slapped by the man. He was then gathered with the other slaves in a shelter. In that place, Solomon also met with Eliza and her two children. They were told to clean themselves and get ready after everything. They were then displayed to be traded in the slave trade. A man named Ford who wanted to buy slaves came and after screening all the slaves, he decided to bring Solomon and Eliza along. Sadly, Eliza had to part with her children. Being a slave, they both did not have the power to fight against him and were forced to obey. Solomon, who then changed his name to Platt, and Eliza were taken to Mr. Ford's house. Eliza kept crying because she was separated from her two children. It made Platt uncomfortable. He got angry while advising her. Her crying over her children made her master uncomfortable. She was then taken somewhere and has never been seen since. Platt started working in Mr. Ford's place. Being a new guy, he often gets scolded by Tibbetts, the head worker in that place. Tibbetts didn't want anyone better than him and hate seeing someone stand out. Mr. Ford and some slaves went to the forest to cut down wood but he was confused about how to efficiently brought all the wood whether by land or the river. Pellet gave his idea to tie all the woods like a canoe and let them washed away by the river but his idea was opposed by Tibbetts and mocked the idea. Debated on his idea, Mr. Ford then gave him the chance to show how his idea worked which turned out to be far more efficient for the work. Platt, you are a marvel. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. He received praise from Mr. Ford and the other slaves except for Tibbetts. Even Mr. Ford gave him a violin as a gift for his bright idea. One day, Platt was given the task to make a small hut. Not liking how he stood out from the other slaves, Tibbetts came and beat him. Not accepting how Tibbetts treated him, Solomon fought back, leaving Tibbetts black and blue. And no better for following instruction! If there's something wrong, it's wrong with the instruction. Not long after, a guy named Chapin, a senior foreman in there. He broke up the fight and let Ty Beats ran away. Soon after, Ty Beats came again and brought two other people with him. They beat and hanged Solomon on a tree. Luckily, Chapin came back and threatened them all to cut off the fight, or else, they would have to pay for their life. Unfortunately for Platt, he was left behind hanged on a tree and nobody dare enough to help him, they were afraid of getting punished. He kept his foot on the ground to lift his body, preventing him from getting hanged to death. In the afternoon, Mr. Ford who was just returned immediately saved Platt and brought him home. Mr. Ford said that this place was not safe for him. Tibbetts might kill him sooner or later if he stayed. He said he would move Solomon to a place that belonged to someone named Mr. Epps to save his life and to pay back his debt to that person. Mr. Epps was known for his cruelty to all his slaves. He did not hesitate to whip his slaves if they make a mistake. There, Platt and the other slaves were assigned to a cotton plantation. In that place, there was this female slave called Patsy. She was so good at her job, surpassing everyone there. 
she could gather up 500 pounds of cotton, leaving everyone that could only do 300 pounds less than her. That made her Mr. Epps's favorite slave. One night, Mr. Epps woke up all the slaves and ordered them to dance for him. Out of the blue, Mr. Epps's wife suddenly threw a flower vase to Patsy. She was jealous because of the way Mr. Epps treated Patsy as his favorite slave and asked him to sell her. Sell the Negro. Sell little Pats? Sell her. Mr. Epps refused the idea, making her even angrier. One day, Mrs. Epps, Mr. Epps's wife, called Platt and ordered him to go buy something for her. On that occasion, Mrs. Epps asked where he came from and whether he can read and write or not. Platt replied saying he was from Washington and he could not read or write. On his way to the market, the idea to run away flashed in his mind but he then met with two landlords who were about to hang their slaves. One of the landlords saw Platt and asked him about his master and what he was doing there. Frightened, Platt said his master was Mr. Epps and he was told to go to the market. Hearing that, the landlord let him go. He was so afraid he passed his intention to run away and do what was told to him. In the evening, Mr. Epps slinked into Patsy's room and raped her. Patsy could not do anything to resist him and was left alone after he was satisfied. The next day, Mrs. Epps ordered Platt to go shopping again. Platt clicked to see the roll of paper that Mrs. Epps had left to deliver to someone. Platt then stole one sheet of paper and tucked it in his sleeve in the hope that the paper would be useful in the future. In the evening, the slaves were ordered to dance again. Even Mrs. Epps handed over some food to all slaves except for Patsy. She did this to provoke Mr. Epps but to no avail, her plan failed. Frustrated, she then injured Patsy. Ah! In trouble! <laughs> all the bad things that happened to Patsy, how Mr. Epps injured her, her wearisome job at the plantation, and sexual assaults, made her lose her hope in life. She asked Platt to kill her because she felt her life was useless after all. Sometime later, the cotton fields that Mr. Epps was proud of were invaded by pests. This caused Mr. Epps to rent his slaves to Judge Turner. Before letting his slaves go, Mr. Epps told them not to tell Judge Turner about his behavior. At Judge Turner's place, the slaves were assigned the job at the sugarcane plantation. They were better there because Judge Turner turned out to be a good landlord to his slaves. There, Platt also got praise from his master for his agile performance. One day Judge Turner found out that Platt was proficient in playing the violin so when a friend of his was looking for a violinist to enliven a party, Judge Turner offered the job to Platt, plus he could even keep his wages from the job. Platt gladly accepted the job, but before going to the party, he took the time to carve his wife's and children's names on the violin as his expression of longing. The pest outbreak in the cotton fields has finally over, this required the slaves to return to Mr. Epps's place. There, a new slave named Armsby, a white man who was forced to become a slave was seen. He used to be a foreman. One night, Platt visited Armsby in his room. They chatted with each other. Armsby said that if he drank a lot of whiskey so his work is no longer productive and finally, he was fired. He ran out of money and chose to be a slave just to survive. But as a white man, Armsby got privileges from Mr. Epps. Even when he didn't fulfill the target, he was not whipped like the other slaves. Instead, he was encouraged to do better. Feeling he can trust Armsby, Platt then asked him to send a letter to New York. Armsby agreed to help him. Platt then wrote a letter with the paper taken some years ago, using berries as ink, and a twig shaped like a pencil. A few days later, Platt was called by Mr. Epps. He found out that Platt wanted to send a letter but then Platt acted and said that he could not read or write and it was a trick by Armsby so that he could get promoted. Fortunately, Mr. Epps believed him and he was saved from a life and death situation. Platt was then forced to burn the letter that he intended to send to his family. Later when the slaves were carrying out their activities, one of them suddenly fainted and died. They felt sad about it, not because they were a family but because they had suffered together for many years so they considered themselves brothers. Years later, Mr. Epps wanted to build a house. He then called a construction expert from Canada named Bass. One day, Bass chatted with Platt. He was surprised by the practice of slavery in America. He considered that it was a bad thing and violated people's rights and freedom. These niggas are human beings. There is no justice, no righteousness in this slavery. Universal truths are constant. What is true and right is true and right for all. One day, Mr. Epps was looking for Patsy. He asked everyone angrily but nobody knew where she was. Soon after, Patsy came and tried to explain that she went to Mrs. Shaw's house to ask for soap because Mrs. Epps didn't give her soap. She tried to explain herself but Mr. Epps ignored it. Mrs. Epps then came and used the opportunity to frame Patsy because she was jealous of her. The provoked Mr. Epps then ordered the other slaves to strip her naked and ordered Platt to whip her. Platt pitied Patsy and so he tried to whip weakly. 
Mr. Epps saw that and threatened him with a gun to whip harder. The punishment was not done yet. Mr. Epps started whipping her violently almost causing her to lose her life. <laughs> Looking at how seriously injured Patsy was, Platt felt the guilt in him and destroyed the violin he got from Mr. Ford to vent his guilt. Sometime after the incident, Platt met Bass and told him that he was named Solomon and was an independent man who came from New York. Listening to this, Bass was shocked and then Platt asked Bass for help to write and send a letter to his friend named Parker about him, his condition, and where he was. Bass contemplated because it might threaten his life, but after thinking about it, he then decided to help Platt out. Did you write my friends in the North? My freedom is everything, sir. It scares me. I will write your letter, sir. A few years later, a sheriff suddenly visited when Platt was working in the field. The sheriff asked who was the person who came with him and Platt confidently said that it was his old friend, Parker. The sheriff also asked him about his real name and his family. After all the questions were answered, Platt finally hugged his friend after 12 years of not seeing him. Mr. Epps was not happy. He tried to stop those people from taking Platt away but the sheriff threatened that he would arrest Mr. Epps because Platt or Solomon was a free man and further told him that the law in America had been changed. Where's the ball called Platt? Come here, boy. You know that man? Mr. Parker, Solomon Northup is my name. Well, your children's name? Margaret and Alonzo. As it will be my pleasure to bankrupt you. Pay him no mind. I'll pay good money for this nigga. Just before leaving, Patsy appeared in front of Platt and hugged him. It was hard for him to leave Patsy, but he had to. Upon arrival, Platt changed his name back to Solomon. He was shocked to see his family's condition after 12 years of not seeing each other while feeling guilty because he had left his family for so long. He looked at a strange face in front of him and his already grown-up daughter said that it was her husband. She also said that she had given birth to a child named just like her father, Solomon. In the end, it was discovered that Solomon was one of the victims of the human trafficking syndicate. Solomon certainly did not stay silent. He then took the traffickers to court. However, because of the racial discrimination in America, his efforts to prosecute the trafficker failed, just because they were whites. The court then released the traffickers but that didn't make him give up to fight against the discrimination. He then wrote a book containing 12 years of experience of being enslaved and became an activist in the movement to abolish slavery in America.